Cat was a idol of mine in an infamous way. He was a myth to me because um, he's older than me. He's four or five years older than me. And I'm from a neighborhood with lots and lots and lots of boys. You know, we we, 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 we rapping with no shirts off. We tattoos. We selling rocks. We jumping gates. And we real, real. I just I always explain. We kind of like the hot boys or something. It's a lot, of boys, ju- yeah, a lot of boys jumping around. So Pat was a myth. He was the freestyle king at high rollers. He was this big dude, such, such. I never really saw him. I just heard about him. But in my neighborhood... I was revered like, man, Kiki got that flow. He's doing this here. He rap. I'm coming. So we, my neighborhood used to put the juice and the plug in my back to, I want Fat Pat. You know, I want that freestyle title and I want all that. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we going to talk. You one of them ones, man. I can interview you all day, every day. And you know when you call me, I said, nigga, you can't do no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we going to do that. I'm like, nigga, you can't do no wrong. Yeah, I've been telling him, like, I've been telling him, let me go knock it down. I told him five, six months. I'm on the way. Let me get it dead. Hey, man, thank you, man. Uh, so I seen you, man, on, uh, uh, what, 50 Years in Hip Hop that Houston. Man, that was dope, bro. Like, uh-huh. I liked the way Donny Houston and, 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 and Bun. How did you feel about that? That was the use. In that nineties boy. Well, I, what's funny about that is I had a little joke that I told while I was on there because they had me on there with some of the great greats, um, Jay Prince and Captain Jack and all that. Steve, hey, man, st- yeah, that ain't my era right there. They're a little bit before. <laughs> so I'm like, man, y'all got me on this panel right here. But it was a great thing, you know. what I'm saying for us to, um, I mean, I didn't even know that a lot of our history was still. There, you know, not just the active part, you know, just living in the city. And it was a lot of faces, even from Lester Sir Pace and just the people that I grew up in the game with. So to be able to see our culture and, you know, I didn't think that the world represented the South with 50 years of hip hop the way that um, that we should. But for us and we and we always take care of our own. So for us to do it at home and get that type of response was great. Man, y'all killed it too, just to educate people. You know how much education was in that room? Yeah. It was so many dope, you know, moments that I seen just listening at everybody tell their story for what they represented during that time was heavy, man. Crazy. And then to see you, yeah, them niggas was a nigga. I should have been sitting up there with them niggas. I got the gray. <laughs> <laughs> I seen yeah, I'm them. Like, I stood up at the end. I said, hey, hold on, hold on. I'll make this panel right here. <laughs> you know, I'm about 14 or 15 in this panel right here, man. So, but it was man. beautiful, man, to see all that. So you, have you worked with Mike Dean? You and Mike Dean yes, did some I stuff together? Dean, yeah. Yeah. Like, like I seen him in uh, Scarface when they did that 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 thing. What was that that little old thing where he did? Oh, it? Tiny's this. Ooh, Explosive. I said, boy, that thing that was crazy. crazy. Mike Dean the goat. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, real you know, crazy with it. As I was far like as that. sounds and history, when people mm-hmm. say, "How he the goat?" Well, I mean, like history, sound, been around, and for the still here and be still active and still looked at in this type of huge way throughout the game. At first, man, when we were young, we were blessed to have him around our city and making music, but he's a worldwide uh, 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 big game player. So to have him in the building to be that was great. Man, you know, I just really looked at like like the way that it, that whole panel, when you look at Jay Prince told his story, d Rick Rick mm-hmm. Shop, you know, he talked about signing you earlier. Yeah. You and, or was it Pat? Pat, Pat? Yeah, yeah, like, like, how did that go down? That's a real deal. That's a real deal. Um, I was a rebel. You know, okay. <laughs> I'm young, I'm a kid, I'm running around, I'm getting it in. So I actually had two deals on the table. I had one with Jam Down, and then I had the other one where Rick was trying to. I actually had three because the the original people, big time, who did Pimp the Pen, the three in the morning, Russell, uh, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Russell, yeah. yeah. Russell tried to sign me first. He felt like I should made that choice first, coming from the pimp to pen, and it would have been natural. But at that time, I was getting hot, so I'm 18, 19 years old. I ran with the first dollars I seen, which was jammed down there. If I had to go back and change anything, I wouldn't, because they, they really believed in me. We'd done a lot. But at that time, d Rick had booked a, a plane ticket for me and Fat Pat to come to Atlanta for him to try to sign us, and I didn't make the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you was young. How old was you then? About 19, About 19 or 20. Shit, you lucky. You. <laughs> I didn't make the trip. So Pat went, you know what I'm saying? And at the time, he was trying to sign both of us, me and Fat Pat, together. So I ended up going with Jam Down. And um, <clears throat> long story short, Pat ended up going with Rick Shop. And that's how it all got started. Wow. So you and Pat, how was y'all's introduction, like you and him, when y'all first linked up and met? Um, Pat was a idol of mine in an infamous way. 
he was a myth to me because um, he's older than me. He's four or five years older than me. And I'm from a neighborhood with lots and lots and lots of boys. You know, we we, 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 we rapping, we no shirts off, we tattoos, we selling rocks, we jumping gates, and we real, real... I just always explain. We kind of like the hot boys or something. It's a Hershey lot of boys. Yeah, a lot of boys jumping around. So Pat was a myth. He was the freestyle king at high rollers. He was this big dude, such, such. I never really saw him. I just heard about him. But in my neighborhood, I was revered. Like, man, Kiki got that flow. He doing this here. He rap. I'm coming. So we, my neighborhood used to put the juice in the plug in my back to, I want Fat Pat. You know, I want that freestyle title and I want all that. So my first time meeting him, he shook me out of my boots. But because I was a kid, I met him at Screw House. But Screw introduced us in that particular frame. Yeah, this that little Kiki I've been telling you about. And this that fat pad that you've been hearing about. And we got the introduction. And we just took it from that. Our first time ever meeting, we done a big Screw tape. The wow. biggest song um, that we probably ever done on Screw is called Funk On Your Mind. Funk don't stop, that shit is on my mind. I think about the shit when I grab my bottle of booze wine. And this was a very big um, Screw tape anthem and still is to today. I'm talking about we got it on from the first time that we've ever seen each other. Went right into Screw House, right in the wood room, got right on the mic and made a tape. First wow. time I ever seen it. That's crazy, man. Because, like I said, when you guys was going, you know, when all that was going down, man, that's like 90, 96, 95, right? Mm -hmm. 95. Mm -hmm. You guys, that music, that sound, that time in the 90s, man, I reflect back and it was stupid, bro, the way it was. But something that Steve, the guy on that panel, was saying is about how hard it was trying to come up being from the South and how they was looked at. You know, I always talk about that mm -hmm. from the East Coast, which East Coast didn't just do that to the South. They just was real. You know, they, they well, we did to the West. The, um, they did to whoever. You know what I'm saying? We, we didn't have Def Jam and um, Universal. and one That wasn't on the corner. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't go downtown. Like, you know, they're... they're their introductions and their opportunities to get in the game with having, you know, they from hip hop, big DJs and um, big record companies and Russell sent, we didn't grow up like that. We really grew up with the, you know, started with the mixtapes and the screw tapes and out the trunk and out there. And, and it was, we got it the hard way. And I think that's what humbled us the most. And that's what made us become the legends that we are. That's why our fans and our people revere us so much because of how we had to come up. They remember these tapes and these sounds and these small clubs and what we were doing, traveling without the navigation and kissing babies. I used to tell people all the time, man, we used to drive four, five hours away. It wasn't no navigation. Turn, Turn right, right by the blue house. <laughs> and then when you get to my grandma's house, call me, we're going to over that. that I'm from that life so imagine that particular fan right there still seeing me and where I'm at today mm -hmm. they love to go in their pocket and give me $10 yeah. for something right now I stream my music Man. because they remember me pulling to that small club and I'm still here and for me to have their daughters and their nieces and them to become fans 20 years later it's, it's great it's not too many places they can do that like wow. the South no, I see I you remember. And, you been amused and amazed <laughs> yeah, we I'm in, just, we in just, this hip hop mode I, I yeah. love it I love it I love it <laughs> Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.